Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I thought today we'd have a look at all the Catlia types. I haven't actually done that as a single video for quite a long time. Now this is going to include a couple of project plants which I normally avoid, um, but I'm not doing another project plant update till probably the beginning of September, so it's a long way off. We won't worry about that. Um, yeah, um, I was going to do the tripod and bring the plants up and show them, but um, it means putting a clean shirt on, I can't be bothered. <laughs> so I'll be filming it in bits and bobs as, as I sort of get to plants, because I've got other things to do out here as well. And um, yeah, but we'll go over them. We've got all sorts, you know, right from sort of seedlings growing on, right up to plants that have bloomed many times for me, um, giants, minis, all sorts. Um, not. I was going to say not a lot in bloom. There's only one in bloom at the moment, but we do have some uh, sheaths and some uh, buds showing in places. So, uh, yeah, let's have a look at the catlia types. Well, the other thing I forgot to say is I'm in, I'm in a dodgy time of year now. It's nice and quiet now. The workmen haven't started bashing around. That's nice <laughs> for filming. I mean, they've got their work to do. But... Um, the problem I've got is the time of day when I can film is early and you can see now outside there's really bright light but it hasn't reached the grow room yet. If I wait for that bright light to get to the grow room all the kit switches on. That's, that's what it's there for and then I've got that sort of noise and disruption. So I've got limited little windows at the moment when I can film and um, early in the day is not the best time because the light's not so good but as we're not doing close-ups on blooms or anything it'll be fine for looking at plants. So let's have a go then. Now my Brassavola little stars is just growing. There's not really anything else you can say when a plant's doing this sort of thing. Um, number of new growths is incredible. I mean, looking at it from the side here, there's four looking at you. Um, masses of new roots. Um, other new growths around this side, many. Um, I couldn't be more pleased with its progress. Moving on from its damaged growing leads, it's just pushed out in all directions and well pleased with reproducing a good root system. So um, uh, these new growths should bloom. There's no reason why they won't. Um, certainly be either later this year or early next year. But um, some of them are starting to show, you know, they're starting to mature. So um, we will see when that next blooms. But um, it's bloomed before. Uh, no reason why it won't do it again. I always forget care. <laughs> I can't do individual care for every single Catlia type I've got because I just end up repeating myself. But if you've got Brassavolas or something with Brassavola in it, you're looking at a higher light variety under normal circumstances. So this lives up with my Vanders, the highest light I can give it. Um, the chances of this burning are zero. Some of my other Catlias in that position would burn. They're not all high light lovers but this one is um, basically it gets watered and fed virtually every time it's in it's in really serious growth mode at the moment um, there isn't a lot of moss there so it gets watered frequently and fed frequently and um, and it does get allowed to totally dry in between that's that's the way of the cat beers. so so that's that one right so this is th three little mounted ones um, these two came out of the big box actually. Um, I'm still not quite sure whether they are miniatures or just young plants. Especially with this one. It's difficult to tell because all the pseudo bulbs are roughly the same size. But what it does have is a new growth. It's produced some nice roots now since it was mounted. I'm happy with that. It's got a very strange name. Um, it's got um, Catlia Leopoldii in it and various other things um, which in theory means it should grow pretty big um, but anyway it's starting a new growth it's already produced some good roots and I think it's produced one new growth um, bifoliate so um, the one thing I will say with bifoliates whether they're miniatures or giants is they are more susceptible to aborting roots at a repot time I haven't got a clue why, they just are. I find the bifoliates are far more likely to dump the old root system at, the re at a repot than the um, monofoliates. And I've got no logic to that. 
but in ex from experience that's just what happens so with the bifoliates it's incredibly important to get your repotting timing right make sure you've got new roots growing because you are liable to lose the old ones uh, so that's that little one um, this little one's um, uh, this one's got a what is this can't even read that ah fading pens downside of my life now this one most of the time puts up two leaves and some of the time puts up one leaf so this hasn't made its mind up yet you do get these um genetic anomalies with complex hybrids where you know there's an amount of monofolia and an amount of bifolia in the plant and it takes it in turns or can't make up his mind um, the latest new growth there on the right is obviously going to have two leaves um, again this one's pushed up some nice roots and um, I'll have to do pop-ups for the for the names it won't take me long um, so that's those two and then this one was a bit of a joke um, this was a piece of my Brasso Catlia make that fell off when I repotted it. I thought, oh, I'm going to chuck it on a mount and see what happens. And it just had that single leaf, the, the larger leaf. And then during this winter, it pushed up a little tiny new growth, which is not going to get any bigger, I don't think, and some roots. So it's now got some roots. It, it only had one. <laughs> and there is a new little growth just starting. So, um, I mean, that'll be for somebody else at some point to grow on. Um, once they get going, they grow quite quickly and can reach blooming size quite quickly. Um, one of the faster growing of the uh, Catlia crosses. Again, that's the brass Brassavola in it, I expect. And every time I say Brassavola, you'll have to live with it because a lot of those have had their names changed. Um, a lot are now Rhyncholalias or something or other. But if I get a plant with a name on, that's the name it keeps for me, unless the name change makes real sense. And most of them do not. <laughs> so that's those three little ones. Oh, we've seen this one a few times re recently because it's the only cat leer I've got in bloom at the moment. Again, a lovely little miniature. Uh, bifoliate. Um, this is Catlia Little Lemon Drops crossed with Encyclia Vitalina, I think it is. And um, I'm pleased with the bloom spike this time. And this has been grown on from a seedling. Um, very distinctive, very small pseudo bulbs gradually getting larger. And eventually the previous growth bloomed. Um, just had two buds on and one blasted, so a single bloom. This time I've got yet again a larger bulb and a good blooming spike this time. I think I've got six, six open and one still to go. So lovely little miniature Catlia. Um, smashing little plant that one. Well pleased with that one. Now this is the BC Make A that that little tiny piece fell off of when I repotted it. Um, this is taking a little bit longer to crack on than I expected, but it's doing it okay now. Uh, it just took a while to sort of take to its climate change and everything. And um, we've got some good new growths coming up on here. Yeah, quite a few um, dotted around, coming up in the middle, um, quite a few around the edge. So I have now got... A, a plentiful amount of new growths because obviously it's not going to bloom on anything that's there now those new growths have got to mature before it's going to bloom again and I was well pleased when this bloomed because I wasn't really expecting it because um, it was new to me and everything and I couldn't see new growths at the time but it not only bloomed I was well impressed with how long those blooms lasted so if you want a Catlia type with long lasting blooms guaranteed then this is a good one to get and a lovely color changer as well but over a very long period of time it opens quite a deep color and then gradually fades until it becomes almost pure white with delicate spotting it's a lovely bloom so uh, yeah I'm pleased with the progress on that got a lot of new root growth coming so sort of, and a lot of those new roots are in the center of the plant uh, they've gone straight down in the pot um, but there are some venturing outwards <laughs> it is quite a large pot really um the pot was not nece was it didn't it didn't necessarily need to be that big but it will do and being in the large chunky bark and a clay pot it's going to stay there for some considerable time and i knew it was going to grow and expand 
you know, it's going to expand in all directions eventually, even if it takes a couple of years, but it will fill the pot. So that was actually given room to expand, partly because I, I was aware that these can be quite vigorous growers and put up a lot of new growths each year uh, once they, you know, once they get a hold and get going. So room for expansion on that one, plenty of room and no need to even think about repotting that for several years. So it can just sit there and get bigger and bloom, which is, which is why we have them really, isn't it? <laughs> now this is a Lelio Catlia. Um, although a lot of the Lalias have had their names changed either to Catlia or something entirely different, so it might not be anymore. Um, but it's Pradit Spots. It's so far bloomed once with one single bloom. Um, so I don't yet know if it is the type of Catlia that only produces one single bloom. The fact that it's got some Lalia in it, it could be. Because some of the smaller Lalias do have that trait. Um, but at the moment, unknown. What is strange about this plant is it's spent quite a long time without pushing up any new growths. Now it looks healthy enough, I mean there's a few tatty old leaves from when I got it and a few ends that were gone, but it's not pushing up new growths, or certainly not many. This was the one that bloomed and that didn't even look as though it matured properly. And it has got some larger growths that didn't bloom so um, I mean, there's four individual plants in there, so it, it's, it's not such a massive plant as it appears to be. There's actually four separate plants in there, and two of those plants were quite small. So they've probably got to mature more before they can bloom. But at the moment, it's having a sort of rest period. It's just not growing new growths. It's growing roots. You know, I've got active growing root tips all over the place, but it's a bit short on the new growths, this one. I'm not worried about it. You know, <laughs> without digging into what in what went into making up that cross and looking at the individual species involved, I can't be bothered. It's okay. <laughs> so I'm not particularly worried. If it spends a whole year and still hasn't pushed up any new growths or bloomed again, then I'll worry. But I'm not worried at the moment. It's okay. Leaves are looking good. Plenty of roots going on, including newer ones growing and still older ones still growing. So it's healthy, it's just um, slow to put up the new growths at the moment. We shall see, you know, time will tell. Now this is um, Cattleya genmanii, so a species Cattleya. Um, it's uh, got a variety name but I've forgotten it, but that still doesn't change it from the species. Um, that normally reflects the bloom, not, nothing to do with the actual plant. Um, this grew this new growth through the winter, yeah? and is a reasonable size but it's much fatter than the previous growths but not quite as tall well that will do for me um, fatter a pseudo bulb is the more energy it can store yeah and its latest new growth is pushing on it's produced a very good root system since it started because it didn't have very good roots at all when I got it roots have gone off in all directions and this is a primary candidate once this growth matures for actually chopping the rhizome and see if it's seeing if I can get a dormant eye to shoot out. But not yet. Um, it's only got two new growths. Um, the oldest leaf on this is going. Um, this is obviously a division, not a seedling, because the bulbs are of similar size and obviously a rhizome was just hacked. Now at the moment it gives me the impression that it's only ever going to produce one new growth at a time. But um, And if you get one like that, it's difficult um, to know what to do. You can try chopping the rhizome and get another new lead from farther back, but it doesn't always work. Um, and obviously if you do cut the rhizome, there's also a theory that if you don't cut it all the way through, um, you still maintain the link between the two pieces, so the plant still thinks it's one piece, but is damaged and triggers the dormant eyes. That doesn't always work either. These are all just things to try perhaps sometime. Anyway, nice new growth. The previous growth didn't bloom. And looking at this one, none of the growths on this particular plant have ever bloomed. So I'd like to see this one bloom. The plant's big enough and strong enough, so it would be good to see that new growth bloom. But again, wait and see as always. This is my um, Iwanagara, or Iwanagara, however you want to say it, apple blossom. Probably one of my 
tattier looking one, plants, but um, uh, quite honestly with this plant, I don't care how tatty it looks as long as it blooms. I didn't get this for, the, for a nice looking plant, I got it for the blooms. I've only ever managed to get this prog to progress in a single direction. It's only ever produced one growth at a time. It could be another one candidate for chopping the rhizome. Um, older part of the plant here looks particularly tatty. That caught the sun. You need to watch this blighter. This doesn't like similar light to normal cattleyas. It likes a bit less. And it will catch quite easy. Um, <laughs> that actually happened in the winter, <laughs> not even in the summer. But anyway, it finished blooming a while ago. Blooms lasted a reasonable time. Very, very fragrant. Gorgeous colours. Um, and we do have a nice new growth coming. At some point down the line, some new roots will form as well because the root system on this is not brilliant. It's there, but it's not brilliant. Uh, much finer roots than some other cattleyas. But uh, there's signs of life on some of the existing roots. Um, there's a bit of activity going on, not a lot. Uh, yeah, I mean, some of these down here have got little green bits showing, but it should produce some new roots with that new growth. Um, these have now become very difficult to get hold of around the EU anyway. Um, they seem to not only be readily available in the States, but lots of different variety types as well. Um, you know, different uh, clonal names and all that sort of stuff. But um, as far as I know, this is just the bog standard one, the original one that was produced. And um, so no additional naming problems for me to remember. <laughs> Got enough trouble with its main name. That's changed now to something I can't even pronounce. Um, anyway, new growth, new roots to come and it's bloomed on every new growth without fail and the last blooming was one of the best ones as far as the number of blooms are concerned and the quality of the fragrance on this is just ah oh, stunning it smells like freesias it's beautiful now this is a relatively new acquisition um, when I got it it was uh, Lelia tenebrosa I think it's now Catlia possibly but what's happened with this one why that is in such a gigantic pot is when I got it lots of people in the comments said oh that grows into an absolute giant so in preparation for such gianthood it's gone in a big pot it looks a little silly at the moment but it's still got air around it, it doesn't matter that it's in a big pot when it's just in chunky bark it's not like the roots are going to stay any soggier than they would in a small pot that dries fast whether it's a small pot or a big pot and the clay obviously helps it and the holes help it even more. Um, what I've got on here is a nice new growth. Yeah. Now that doesn't lead me to believe that that's going to be a giant growth. New roots progressing um, and a relatively new acquisition. So it hasn't got a strong root system yet but it's, it's pushing the roots now. So uh, we are getting some new roots. And some of these new roots are not coming off the latest growth. They're coming off previous growths. Yeah. So I think it's just happy to be in some media and have something to grow into. But um, I think there's just a single new root coming off this new growth. But I haven't had it long. It's got to settle in. You know, got to sort itself out. And I think, again, this has been grown from a seedling and may still be a seedling because the bulbs are progressively going from this tiny little one in here to one a slightly bit bigger through there followed by one a little bit bigger and now my new one I'd expect my new one to at least get that big otherwise it's been set back yeah so we'll see how it does um, but I think grown from a seedling and it looks to me like it's actually got two directions of growth because it's coming up here to this one, which is quite large. And there is a bulge at the base. So I got a feeling I might get another new growth here. And that's why there's root activity here when it looks like the old part of the plant. If you see what I mean, as well as here. So I think this is heading off in two directions, which will be good. The more leads you've got, the more chance of blooming you've got. I've got a feeling that's a long way off blooming. <laughs> Time will tell. I'm going to try a memory test here, even though I know I'm going to do a pop-up. Encyclia cordigera, variety Siang Yu, I believe. <laughs> this was the one that had to be desperately rescued, and I think I only just caught it in time, but it is now rescued. It's now pushing up good growth in many places. Nice new growths, pushing out 
in many places so it's fully recovered it's produced a flipping good root system in a very short space of time just didn't like what what it was in before uh, these do not like soggy roots in any shape or form they need a fast wet dry cycle and good air around the roots as you can see this had never grown well until it went in this pot with that media and it just whoosh it just took off yeah so um, again this isn't a really high light one you get the light too high on here your leaves will turn pale if you get it wrong they'll burn um, so good cattleya light I would say but not the strongest otherwise it will burn but yeah coming on nicely I don't see any reason why some of some or even possibly all of these new growths should bloom down the line and if several of them bloom together that should put on a nice show I'm just pleased it's alive because it was borderline. I really thought I'd lost this, so that's a good recovery. And all it was, it was in the wrong media. Simple as that. Now this is one of the spindlier cattleya types, as I call them. They have very long, thin pseudobulbs with like a little, well in this case, pair of leaves on the top because it is a bifoliate. But they're very long and thin, so they produce a lot of height and not a lot of bulk. Um, what is this one? Oh, it's a it's a Harrison Harrisoniana cross. Um, so two named clones of Harrisonia cross back. So um, species basically. Um, it produced this growth and promptly bloomed. I was well pleased and forgot to take a picture. Duh. <laughs> it's now produced this new growth, and it has a sheath and. Yeah, there's a good spike in there, so we will get blooms on that in the not too distant future. So, um, in theory, once a cattleya reaches blooming size, it should do it every time. It shouldn't get a blind growth very often. You will get one occasionally that just managed to grow at the wrong time, for instance, and matured in the middle of winter when the light wasn't there, so the sheath stays blind. But once a cane's reached blooming size, the new growth should continue to do so. Um, an odd one going missing, or a blind sheath, is not the end of the world. Um, may just not have had enough stored energy to produce the spike in the buds. It does happen. But under normal circumstances, once they bloom, they should bloom. Now this has done a lot of roots recently. Didn't have very good roots at all when I got it. These are the old ones. But they supported it enough to get it in there. Um, but it had a weird shaped rhizome. It wouldn't go down in the pot without breaking all the roots off. That's why it's um, looking like a liana <laughs> in a mangro mangrove swamp. <laughs> yeah. But nonetheless, the roots have gone down in. You know, Some of them come out, go around the edge of the pot. And there's root activity in places. And um, new roots will form on the latest growth, probably after it blooms. That's what it did last time. So doesn't produce, not all cattleyas produce their roots when the new growths grow. Far from it. They can do all sorts of weird and wonderful things with their roots. And this one produces its new roots after it's bloomed. You couldn't get a more mature growth than that, could you? So that's how it goes. You could turn that round and actually say it produces its new roots just before the growth. Those are one and the same. Yeah? Think about it. <laughs> it's just the way you want to look at it. Now this one hasn't long been out of bloom, and it, it did something strange last year, it's the one with the long name. Um, Shin Fong, Little Sun, Young Min, Golden Boy. An eight foot long tag. But its main direction of growth is here, and the new growth is just starting, um, and this growth bloomed, so happy with that. But round the back of the plant it did something really weird and pushed up two very obscure dwarfed growths basically they both actually bloomed but because they were new growths i think i'm going to get two leads around this side of the plant now uh, hopefully this time they'll get to full size i can't guarantee that and um, this is one of the few cattleyas i've got that have got some scale on them that i um, i've been leaving them on the grounds that where they are is around the base of the rhizome they can't really do much harm down there <laughs> they get up on the leaves and in the leaf joints they can but this plant needs treating. I've got a couple of cattleyas that scale have had a resurgence on. That's all I can call it because um, I've always said if you've had scale you've probably still got them lurking somewhere. But I think because of the better conditions out here 
a few of the survivors have sort of got going again. So I need to, um, I'm not prepared to let them get on the leaves and start marking them and get in leaf joints where they're a nuisance and you can't deal with them. So some of my catlias need treating, so uh, I'm happy to do some, but I think the days are long gone when I've had to treat the whole grow room and get a systemic spray in every single plant because I had so many bugs. Those days are gone. Um, there seem to be reasons. One person's adamant that big strong plants full of calcium don't get the bugs. The bugs go somewhere else because the orchids are too tough. And that's all very well, but in an enclosed space like mine, they haven't got anywhere else to go. So they'll find the weak plants. How they do that, I'm not sure, but they do. And you can see some scale in this area. This is the weak part of the plant. Yeah. <laughs> So there's some truth in that. They will find either the new growths or the weak bits. But I'm going to have to treat a couple of plants. It's no big deal. Um, I'd rather not have to, but I'm not, you know, I'm not getting big rings on my leaves. And they'll have the new growths as well. And what they do is they bite into the new growths. They don't kill the new growth. It's not a big deal. But when the leaves open, the marks remain and grow with the leaf. So instead of being a small little bite mark, it turns into a yellow ring that's quite visible on the mature leaves because it sort of grows with the leaf. As the leaf gets bigger, the mark gets bigger with it. So I can do without them. So I'd rather uh, not let them get hold again. As they, you know, when I had that bad, they really took some getting rid of. But um, yeah, just a couple of plants. I'll live with that. Now we're looking at another one that um, has got a name about eight foot long. This was in bloom a while ago, had the lovely red star-shaped um, blooms on, um, very attractive, um, and one of my few bits of red in here, Siang Yu, Red Pearl, Red Dragonfly. Um, we were all guessing it was going to be red, <laughs> which it was. Anyway, lousy root system when I got this one, took a while to get going, grew this new growth and bloomed, and the new growth has successfully produced some roots. I wouldn't say that's a lot, but it hasn't got a lot to support behind it at the moment. But nice strong new growth coming now. A bit squashed up against the edge of the pot, but it doesn't matter. I have a theory that this lead will move round on the inside edge now. Um, otherwise it's going to be out of the pot soon. But we do have a new growth coming, nice strong one pushing on. Um, this one is another candidate for possibly cutting the rhizome. Um, this growth here looks like a lead but it has no eye on it well maybe if there was a cut down through there this might trigger something on this one some catlias the dormant eyes are virtually non-existent but they're sort of there um, you just can't see them as well as you can on some others so um, maybe after this ne next growth has um, pushed on and bloomed um, that would give me three bulbs to here, all with leaves, and the possibility of a cut there and triggering an eye farther back. Um, I like the blooms on that a lot. To get two leads going and a succession of blooms would be, would be well worth trying. But I don't believe the plant's big enough or strong enough to do it now. It needs that extra mature bulb that's finished blooming. Yeah, and possibly even the next new one starting. But we'll have a think about it. Okay, I'm going to cut this one off now and call it part one. Um, part two is this lot, <laughs> the big stuff, or mainly big stuff. And we'll have a video that's ridiculously long if I carry on. And quite a lot of the same, if you know what I mean. So I'll do that at a later date, and we'll do that top shelf. Um, all sorts of things going on up there. Um, not sure I've actually got any. Yes, I have. Yeah, there's at least one with some bud showing. So uh, I'll do that later. Uh, maybe at the beginning of next week. So uh, thanks for dropping by. Um, as I say, I don't, uh, I don't do looking at an individual genus very often. And I mean, it's like the dendrobiums, I couldn't possibly do it. We'd end up with at least three videos because there's so many. Um, I've got over 200. I haven't counted lately. I think it's about 220 orchids in total. But I know I've got around 50 dendrobiums, so it's, it's just under a quarter of my whole collection. And the rest of the collection is all sorts. 
<laughs> There's nothing else competes. Um, I mentioned about this bulbophyllum, yeah, and the fact that the blooms are actually quite attractive and quite delicate. That's the one that was in bloom yesterday. I think it's just signed its exit warrant. I got a feeling that only lasted five or six days. That's not good enough for me. I need more out of a blooming than that. But I will now keep my eye on that one. Because that actually let's do that one. Because that one hasn't even opened yet. So we'll watch that one. Whatever the date is today. Um, oh, I should know what day it is today. It's the summer solstice, isn't it? So 21st of <laughs> June. So on the 21st of June, that's what that bloom looked like. Yeah? If in two weeks time that's on the floor, that's not good enough. <laughs> and it'll be off to somebody else who appreciates small and delicate and doesn't mind things that don't last too long. <laughs> we'll see how we go. See you next time. Thanks for dropping by.